Hey friends, welcome to Grace's Garden. I hope you guys had a wonderful Easter weekend. Do you know what I love? Fruit. There are so many different kinds of fruit that we're able to eat, like apples and bananas and strawberries and blueberries. There's so many different fruits to choose from. Do you like fruit? My favorite fruit is an apple. I can eat apples with a lot of different things. Sometimes peanut butter or honey. And I can even have it in a pie. All fruit is different. Fruit is so good to keep you healthy, but it's also yummy too. I have some fruit to share with you all today, but it's not apples and bananas. We're gonna be talking about the fruit of the spirit. The Bible verse that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys today is Galatians 5, 22 to 23. The Bible verse says, but the spirit gives love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law that says these things are wrong. To help us learn Galatians 5, 22 to 23, my friend Ben is going to be sharing with us a song to help us remember the fruit of the spirit. Hey kids. Today we're going to learn about the fruit of the spirit. My name is Ben and I want to show you guys a song to help you memorize all of the fruits of the spirit. In the Bible, we find the fruit of the spirit in Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23. Are you guys ready to sing along with me? Here we go. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace, patience, and kindness, and goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Galatians 5, 22, 23. Alrighty, let's try to go a little bit faster now. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace, patience, and kindness, and goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Galatians 5, 22, 23. Good job, guys. Let's go even faster. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace, patience, and kindness, and goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Galatians 5, 22, 23. Woo! Let's go, guys. Now, I want you guys to try to go faster, even faster than me. I'm going to do my best. All right. Here we go. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace, patience, kindness, and goodness, faith on the strength of self-control against the sins there is no law. Galatians 5, 22, 23. Woo! All right. There's your challenge. Now you guys have the fruit of the Spirit memorized with the scriptural, Scripture. Scripture. Galatians 5, 22, and 23. All right, guys, see you later. Thanks for stopping by. Wow, wasn't that song so cool? I hope you guys enjoyed it and were able to remember the fruit of the Spirit. So let's talk about what each fruit of the Spirit means. The first fruit of the Spirit I wanna talk about is love. Think about someone who you know loves you so much. That could be your mom your dad. It could be a family member, a friend, a teacher. You can make mistakes and it doesn't matter what you look like, but they still love you. God loves us too, no matter what. He even loves you more than your parents. He can help us love others the way we should. The next fruit of the spirit is joy. Joy is like being very, very happy even when things may not be going our way. We can try being joyful on our own, but God is the only one that can give us that true happiness to be joyful. The next fruit of the spirit is peace. When we think of peace, we normally think about that there's no fighting or there's no war. That is right, but peace in the spirit is a little bit different. This is the peace that we get when we know God very well. You can find his peace by reading the Bible, praying to him any time of the day, and asking questions about how good he is. There's so many ways that you can receive God's fruitful peace. If we have this peace, we can feel that calmness inside our hearts 
and we know that God forgives all the sins that we commit. Patience is the next fruit of the Spirit. Have you ever been told to have patience or be patient? Sometimes we want something so bad, but it may not be in God's timing. Like when we have to wait in a long line or wait to open Christmas presents on Christmas morning. The patience that God is talking about is the kind where we have to wait to open Christmas presents or waiting to go to the playground. But it also means to be patient for prayers to be answered that may not be answered in the way that we want. Sometimes we want something really bad, but it may not come in the second that we want it to. But God knows what we need and when we should receive it. Next is kindness. Kindness should be easy, but sometimes it's not. Is it easy to be kind to someone who is mean to you or being kind to someone who needs it? Of course, it's easier to be kind to someone who needs it, but God calls us to be kind to everyone. When God gives us this gift, it's more than just being kind to others. He might call us to be kind to someone who needs it and we may not be aware of it. For example, you might feel called to reach out to a friend that you may have not talked in a while or to tell your mom and dad how much you love them. Sometimes your kindness helps someone else remember that people love them and care for them. Being good or goodness is the next fruit of the spirit. Being good can be showing others that you know what's right and wrong through your actions. Having the gift of goodness means God can depend on us to be honest and confess our sins and turn away from bad things. Sometimes we need to act this way towards others through our actions so they can see the fruit in us. The only true goodness we have is the goodness of God living in us. Faithfulness is the next fruit of the spirit. And this one may be a little more trickier to understand. Being faithful can look like keeping our promises, being a loyal friend even when it's hard to, and being trustworthy and doing things when you said you would do them. When I think of faithfulness, I think of my mom. Before I was born, she would pray to God every day for me to be healthy and strong and live for God the rest of my life. Her faithfulness to pray to God encourages me to be faithful to everything I'm committed to. The next fruit of the Spirit is gentleness. When I think of gentleness, I think about holding an egg. For some reason, we think we might break the egg if we don't hold it super carefully. The kind of gentleness God is talking about is similar to this. In any difficult situation where it's hard to not be frustrated, we are called to be gentle. If someone is being mean to you, this doesn't mean that we shouldn't speak up and talk to a parent about it. Simply, we should do it in a gentle manner, like Jesus would. The last fruit of the Spirit is self-control. Self-control is very important because we need to be able to control what we say or do. Without self-control, we're not able to do what the Lord has called us to do. To be able to live the way God wants, we need to have control of our actions. Just like when a brother or sister bugs you so much that you want to get angry at them, we need to have the self-control to not want to yell at them. Sometimes we can't do all that we feel like wanting to do because it's not right and we could get punished Look at these it. three Some of you may be wondering, fruit. what is so important about the fruit, fruit of the Spirit? When we Faith listen fruit and follow and real fruit, God's commands, one plate has we bear fruit. fruit. And no, it you has been in the house fruit for too growing long. off of our arms. It really this seems that and people be thrown out the into love, the trash. Joy, rotten fruit, peace, patience, very kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control through our genuine actions. What is being genuine? Genuine means that you want to do something because you care so much about it and you want to share that. Then your actions will be a seen of fate because fruit. you want to. This not fruit is not to. real. There are many this people doesn't that have rotten, a lot of fruit that they bear. But it doesn't look yummy either. But sometimes that fruit can be rotten or maybe not fruit at all.
lives may seem good at a quick glance, but really their lives are not being productive or good for anything. And then we have the plate of real fruit. Anger, selfishness, fresh fruit, and jealousy does not only look are not good from to the Holy look at, Spirit, but it's healthy for just you as too. rotten fruit. It can provides make you really nutrients sick, that sin everyone can make needs, you spiritually and it sick, tastes great. Can separate you from God. This fake fruit reminds us that some people do not seek the Holy Spirit to work within them. The things that they may say or do look really good on the outside, but on the inside, they're not genuine about their actions. The fruit of the spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The fruit of the spirit in our own lives glorifies God and makes people want to spend time with us. Which plate of fruit would you eat? The rotten fruit, the fake fruit, or the fresh fruit. Wow, there is so much great information that we learned about the fruit of the Spirit today. There are so many different fruits of the Spirit that the Lord has for us, and He gives it fully and abundantly. We can encourage those to give their whole heart to serve the Lord, and their fruit will be as yummy and juicy as a plate of apples and bananas. To end today's lesson, let's pray together that we're able to receive the fruit of the Spirit that the Lord gives us. Jesus, thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you that we are able to enjoy following you and that the evidence of that is in the fruit of the Spirit. Thank you that we can continue to share your work in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you all have a blessed day and go eat some fruit. I love you all. Bye.